was the head pin that went all the way to the sideboard and rolled all the way back and took that pin out right there. He has got a lot of action on that ball today. He's throwing the ball great. Got to have a lot of confidence. Think pink, my friend. Think pink. Danny Aqua. Good action on that ball. But he answers with a strike of his own. And Danny has the veteran that Danny is and the, the great bowler that he is. He was practicing out there before we started, and he was trying to throw the outside part of the lane, and it wasn't working the way he wanted it to, and he has now pushed himself into the middle where Darren is playing, and he's going to use that part of the lane right there because he sees how it's reacting. He saw a different reaction than what he was getting earlier, and you don't see Danny play there that often because Danny controls the outside of the lane, and that was a great start for him. The number one seed, a lot of people rooting for him to get this done. You see it right here on the second frame. See how he keeps it low. Arm starts to move then. Good English. A little wide, but backs up. Yes. Right. It's almost the opposite of what we saw earlier with Gary Dunham. Gary Dunn takes those three steps. If you watch when Danny goes up there, I believe he might even, I think his is a seven-step approach that you do not see in bowling. And he takes his time. He's got two or three steps he takes before he even starts moving that bowling ball. It's a different style, it's a different approach, does that, but it does the job week after week. Danny comes from a bowling family. His dad, Donnie's over there, his mother, Dorothy's over there. His wife, Wendy's a great bowler. His daughter, Chelsea, this year qualified in the men's division of this tournament. His other daughter, Haley's a bowler. His daughter, Devin, she's bowls. His son, Bryce. His grandchildren are here, Gabby, Max, and Lakin. This is an aqua house today. They're all here to watch him and see how he can do. But look at that shot. Oh, and leaves the 10. The second time in a row, although he did not get the kickback bounce from the, uh, from the pin on this one. I believe it's because he's pushed that line a little bit more outside. He's making that ball do a little bit more work, and it's not coming up flush like it was earlier. He's not, he, even last time, he had to have that messenger come back and get it. it it's going to happen as the lane starts to, he eventually he's drawing out the outside part of the lane a little bit more than earlier he was just trying to take the inside lane. There's that brain ball. The hard shell. He's, he's, he's a very good bowler, though. A guy that averages 240 doesn't miss spares. He makes his spares each time. A guy that has that many little check marks after his name in a bowling resume does not miss spares like that. So good for Darren. Darren Alexander. Going into the third frame. The strike, yeah, nine see, with the spare. See Bobby Belichico back there taking some pictures. Checking out the action. That's the, that's his, uh, a lot of other uh, people in the house here at the Rose Bowl. I see the top qualifier, Shane Courtney, in the audience as well. Although and he wasn't able to make it to the... the no, uh, not this year, but you know what? He actually is still bowling in the in the youth bowling program. And putting up scores. He actually just won the CTF tournament. Oh, there, there you go. Oh, there, that's there now again, you see. You notice there's a different reaction when he hits that ball up high, flush in the pocket like that. Doesn't get it out quite as wide. Comes in strong. And it doesn't stand a chance, those poor pins. Dan Aqua, going to the rosin. Good start for Dan Aquin. Obviously, this is the start you want when you're aiming for your first ever championship. Absolutely, but as far as Danny's concerned, this is not really his first time on this hit, this ride. He's been here so many times before. He's been so close. He 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 has in his career he's bowled 64 300 games, 28 800 series, and actually has the highest score of a five game series. When he pulled it in the bowl, so he's over at the rail, he shot 13 19 for five games back in 1991. He's also a member of the 1995 team of himself, Mike Snow, who we mentioned in the back today, John Pavisic, the brother of Frank in the back back there, Wayne McKay, the late Wayne McKay, and Todd Sim, where they qualified for the Reno World Team Challenge back in 1995. Wayne McKay, the 1987 winner. Former owner of the Super Bowl and Forest Glade. Todd Sim, and you look at the resume he's put together, obviously. Todd Sim was bowled professional bowling, professional tour, senior tour, bowling over the States better than he's ever bowled before right now. 
He's amazing. Dan Aqua is a runner-up three times in the Molson Masters Classic. And he's got the fourth frame unlocked. And he's a vocal bowler. You saw him there. As soon as he released that ball, he knew he put it in the right spot. Came out with the, you heard out here in the back, all ten. And Danny is lined up. He's ready to bowl today. Absolutely. And actually, Danny off with a runner-up in 2013. Just a couple of years ago. That's right. The winner of that uh, of that tournament, Steve McClellan. Steve McClellan, brother of Dan McClellan. Mm -hmm. He's bowling in the PBA Tour tomorrow. There you go. Another great bowling family. Their sister Ann bowls on Wednesday nights. Their mother Michelle was a bowler. And their father, Len McClellan, is a legend in this city. Len McClellan ran the, the, the pro shop and a few of the bowling alleys in the city. Was a great bowler himself, a member of the board, Hall of Famer. Great bowling family. Alexander, last year's champion. Throws right over the third arrow, gets the comeback. Oh, Can't he got the kiss out of the pit from the six pin and just didn't want to knock it over. He's giving a little bit of extra steam there, if you notice that, a little bit harder. Gave it a little touch, just not enough. He's got to, he can't get frustrated here. He knows Danny's throwing strikes. One of the easiest things to do is to start getting frustrated. He's got to stay on his game, make his spares, keep on going. Put a lot of effort into it, obviously. Last game, only 278. This game, not off the, to the start, but still a solid game nonetheless. Good spare. Keep your composure. The one thing Mike has been noticing about Darren is the arm swing. It's almost like a slingshot. The ball gets back there and he just leaves it out on the lane. Has a great follow through. Really comes through the ball well. It's it's what you'd see if you were tuning into the PBA. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, because it is that conventional, the, the approach, the assessment, it's all, to me, Textbook. He's got that power game. And that, that's a power bowler. There's a lot of young power bowlers out there. And Darren is a power bowler. There you go. Yep. He's got late nine down, that's for sure. He's dead solid in the pocket on that one. He is locked. You're absolutely right. Right here. Comes back right through the pocket. Solid strike. Danny's got a four-bagger, trying to keep it going. He knows he can't open the door for Darren at all. I know Darren doesn't want to keep the current base he's got. He's not going to go home very happy with a Dutch 200 game. That would be a strike and spare yes. every frame. Danny wants to wish a happy Valentine's Day to his wife, Wendy, his kids, Chelsea, Haley, Bryce, Devin, and his mom and dad. Danny's been bowling for 46 years. 46 it's, uh, and it's odd how he's never won a tournament, but could this be the year? Danny Aqua. He's lined up. Five bagger. He has thrown it very, very consistent. Each ball has been in the same spot. If you notice here, he lays it down right between the second and third arrow. The ball goes out to about eight board, and it's just destroying the pins through the pocket. He is lined up right now. Danny's a member of the Hall of Fame here in Windsor, Essex County. He's also part of the Ontario Hall of Fame. He was entered there in 2012. And he's the owner of the Aqua Pro Shop here at Red's Rose Bowl. He's been the owner of Aqua's Pro Shop for eight years now. He was over at the Bolero until that bowling alley no longer ran and now he brought it over here to the Rose Bowl. Sixth frame. Oh, he sent that out wide. Oh. Oh. Sometimes he get lucky. He knows he got lucky there. He put that ball out about five boards wider than he sent out the last ones. You can see right off the bat he knew and it, oh, what a great break. Clapped it home. Good job by Danny Aqua. That's the break he needed. Sometimes that little shot right there is going to give him all the momentum he needs to go right to the end. A six pack. 
right now for Dan Aqua? I know you can feel it. It's kind of nice to feel, and I don't mean in any way belittle what Darren Alexander is doing here. Because he's doing great, but a lot of people starting to feel it. Is Danny going to get his first one here? Is Danny going to get his first one? One thing about that 1995 World Cup that he went to in Reno with an international team, he really remembers that tournament because that 